spring. But today, we're going to listen to Serge tell us about uh, augmenting graphs to uh, minimize the diameter. So, yes. here we go. Thank you, Nick. Um, so this joint work with Fabrizio Frati, Joachim Gudmundsen, and Luke Matthiessen. And the, the problem I want to look at is um, you want to minimize the diameter of a graph by adding edges. And there are several objectives. You could like add at most k edges or add edges of cost at most b when you have a budget b. And so what's the diameter? Um, so the distance between two vertices in a graph is the length of the shortest path between them. And then the, di the, the diameter of a graph is the largest distance between any two vertices in the graph. Um, and minimizing the diameter could uh, occur in uh, any kind of graph problems where you want to minimize distances and where you can actually add edges. Is it the largest distance or the longest path or is it the longest shortest path? It's the longest shortest path. Uh, we we'll look at weighted graphs, yeah. Yeah, all results are actually for weighted graphs. Um, costs could be unit when we have at most k edges at our disposal, or the costs could also be some integer weights. So formally, we have the following problem. So the input is a graph G, and so we have a length for each possible edge and non-edge in the graph. Uh, we have a cost for all the non-edges that we could act, actually add to the graph, and we have an integer budget E. Um, so just uh, for notation, uh, this V squared denotes all possible edges on the vertex set V, and so V squared minus E denotes the non-edges, so the, the edges that are not actually present in the graph and that we could add. Each of those has a cost, and we want to minimize the diameter of the resulting graph where we look at the, the weights uh, defined by this length function. Um, um, so I assume here that the costs are non-zero. Um, if you have an edge with cost zero, then you would just add it to the graph and yeah, for free. Yeah, so we have all edges and non-edges have lengths, and all non-edges have costs. And you could look at the, actually at the, the edges that are already present as uh, edges with cost zero. So you, you just add them for free, and that's your starting point. Yes, so we want to minimize the diameter of this graph, and we have a budget at our disposal. Uh, to look at an exa example, um, so suppose the solid edges here, uh, which are black, uh, they form our input graph. And then the, the dashed edges, which are actually red in my slides. Um, <laughs> they're red over here as well. Oh, they are red over there, yes. <laughs> there's, there's no red on the, on the main graph. Yes, so the, the dashed edges are those that we could add. So we have a budget of, uh, we have a budget of two. And so what we could add is either this edge of cost two or those two edges which each have cost one. So the, the edge of cost two has a very small length, so it might, mis, might make sense to add it, uh, but actually the other solution is uh, optimal. Uh, so if we add these two edges, then we get a diameter of three of this graph. If you only would add the, the other edge, then actually to get from B to D, um, we need length four. We need a path of length four. Um, so this solution is optimal. Uh, so we can get from this diameter six graph to a di diameter three graph um, with a budget of two. So in general, you might not only want to minimize the diameter, but also the, the, the money that you use. Um, so this is a bi-criteria optimization problem. Uh, the first criterion is the cost of the added edges. And the second one is the diameter of the resulting graph. And I look at approximation algorithms. Um, so an alpha beta approximation algorithm for this problem um, is an algorithm that computes a set of non-edges such that 
they have cost at most alpha times the budget. So we might actually want to spend more money than our budget is. Um, and the diameter of the resulting graph when we add those edges is at most beta times optimum, where opt is actually the minimum diameter you could achieve in any augmentation with cost at most B. <coughs> so opt is uh, the solution to this problem, uh, the, the, cost, uh, the, the diameter of the solution. And yes, so, so alpha the, is the approximation factor for the costs and beta is the approximation factor for the diameter. Um, so people have looked at it in various settings, um, mostly in very restricted settings where you have unit costs and unit weights or unit costs and all the non-edges have the same weight, W. Um, there's one very general algorithm by Dodis and Kana in stock 99. Um, they had an approximation algorithm for polynomially bounded lengths and arbitrary costs. Sir? Yep. Um, so for uniform weights, the weight could be more than one, but all the weights are the same. But how does it change the, the distribution? Um, so here, all the all the weights in the graph have have weight. All, all the lengths um, are one. Oh, I should have said lengths right. instead of weights. So you add maybe longer. Uh, yes. Yeah, the, the non-edges have uniform weight, and the edges that are already there, they have arbitrary weight, arbitrary lengths. Do you think they can just Yes, yes. If you have unit weights, that's on it. Yep. Uh, how hard is it to solve the problem exactly? Um, so it's NP-hard, and um, I'll show a hardness result as well. From an approximation point of view, there are also some approximation lower bounds. Um, I'll show one, one later. <coughs> um, so the, the best results are in bold here. Um, but actually, we will look at uh, arbitrary weights, arbitrary lengths, and arbitrary costs. And this makes our algorithms hard to compare to the previous work, uh, because they are all in very active settings. Uh, so what are our results? Um, so note that the, the trivial algorithm has this running time. Um, you would just go through all possible choices of uh, non-edges of cost at most B and try to add them to the graph and see what diameter you get. So then the, the running time is something like this because all the non-edges have uh, cost at, at least one. Um, so the question here I'm interested in can we improve this running time to an FPT running time? Uh, so this is polynomial whenever the, the budget is a constant, but actually can we, but it depends, nast, so the degree of this polynomial depends on B, which is not very nice. That's quite nasty actually. And the question is whether we can get this B out of the degree of the polynomial here. Um, so can we get an FPT running time, which is some function of the budget, times a fixed polynomial in the instance size. Um, and uh, actually, we, we have a lower bound a reduction from set cover that says, no, we cannot achieve this. Uh, we cannot get a running time of this form uh, because the problem is actually W too hard for unit costs and lengths uh, for, and for, budge, for the parameter budget. Um, so W2 hard is a, a complexity class which rules out running times of this form. I don't want to go into the details. It's, it's related to a uh, circuit set where um, the, the lengths of, or the, the number of nodes that you reach from the, or that you encounter from the root to any leaf that has unbounded fan out uh, is at most two. And the parameter is the number of ones that you want to get in the output. So, uh, 
just state it more simply, um, dominating set where the parameter is the size of the dominating set is W2 complete. <clears throat> and so for those W hard problems, uh, it is believed that you cannot achieve such running times. Um, otherwise, some complexity results would fail and you would actually get a, a sub-exponential sub time algorithm for satisfiability, which is my people believe that it's not possible. Um, so it's not only W2 hard to uh, solve this problem exactly, it's even W2 hard to compute uh, such an approximation where the diameter is less than three half of the optimum and the budget is slightly more than what we actually, uh, slightly more than B. How can you give some very high level idea of what things you take care of when you get a reduction? Do you need to have an FPT reduction or any approximation? So, so, actually, we have an FPT reduction uh, from set cover. Uh, which shows that it's W2 hard to even decrease the diameter from three to two, okay. uh, which takes care of this part. Okay. So giving anything better than three, three half uh, approximation for the diameter would solve that problem exactly. Um, and then we, we copy some of our gadgets to, to make sure that uh, we also ensure some, something more than one here. Um, but now, can we maybe achieve a constant factor FPT approximation? So an, an approximation algorithm which has this running time, f of b times the polynomial in n. Um, and it turns out that we can actually do this. And uh, so we have an FPT 1,4 approximation. So the budget, we, we don't use more money than, than in, is in our budget. Uh, but the diameter will be at most four times the optimum. Um, and the running time of this algorithm is something that depends exponentially on, on the budget and uh, the exponential factor is three to the b. And this works for arbitrary costs and lengths. How's the budget? Sorry, I missed that. Uh, binary. Um, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't actually matter much. Um, and then for unit costs, we can act actually get some polynomial time uh, approximation algorithms. And uh, so there's a trade-off here between uh, the costs and uh, the diameter that we achieve. Um, I should mention that the W2 hardness result uh, for an exact algorithm uh, was independently obtained by Gao and others in uh, th this year, uh, also for unit costs and unit lengths. And of course, this holds whenever the cost and length are non-unit as well. Um, so as a warm-up, uh, we can look at a simpler problem, um, which is to determine the shortest path between two vertices when we can add additional edges to the graph. Uh, so we want to, actually I, our algorithm, we need to answer queries like this. What is the shortest path from U to V? Uh, using non-edges of total cost at most b, or b prime. Um, so how could we do this? Um, well, we take our graph. So just before we start, yep. if you have an oracle that is able to answer this yes. query, yep. and you run it at most uh, one square times, will it solve the CMP completely? Uh, no, um, that's not sufficient. Um, because you can reuse an edge for several pairs. Um, actually, you would need to, yep. And what is known about this, this subproblem? Um, I think we are the first ones to study this one. Um, well, it has been studied for unit costs, of course. Um, and <laughs> yeah, so, so these guys actually have a big approximation factor for the, for the cost, so they don't do this. Um, I think we're the, the first ones to, to do this, yeah. Um, so we take our graph, we make uh, B plus one copies of it, 
And so if we have at our disposal a budget of uh, B prime, uh, then assume for a moment that we have unit costs to, to simplify this description. So we will need to get from a vertex here to a vertex at level B prime um, with the shortest path. And actually between the levels, we, we add the non-edges. And so we, when we go from the, from the lowest level to level B prime, uh, just make sure that we, we use at most B prime non-edges of the graph. And so these non-edges are actually directed edges between the copies. And so you can only go upwards using non-edges. So using one non-edge, you go one level up. Yeah, there are some technicalities like this, yes, yes. Um, we actually add, we add loops. Uh, loops actually have cost one, just to simplify the description, and length zero. Um, so this is for the figure for unit costs. When, when you have larger costs, then you just add this, this directed edge uh, from some level to a level that's, uh, well, that corresponds to, to its cost. Uh, so if you have a cost of C, then you would go from level zero to level uh, C. So we actually can compute the shortest path between all pairs using uh, any budget, which is at most B. Um, in this running time, which is polynomial in, in V and N. So you get all pairs shortest paths uh, using cost at most B. And then we can all answer all these queries like this after pre-processing that takes this amount of running time. So the first step of our algorithm is a clustering process. Um, and the clustering process is very simple. Um, we will partition our graph into regions such that the diameter within a region is quite small. Um, so for this, we greedily compute a set of cluster centers. Uh, the first one, we just choose it arbitrarily. And then to compute the second one, we take a vertex at maximum distance from the first one. And for any new vertex, uh, we take one that's at maximum distance from all the others. So you want to maximize the minimum distance from any existing cluster, cent cluster center. So, and when we do this, um, we actually prove that uh, for every vertex in our graph, uh, the minimum distance from this vertex to the cluster center is at most opt. And, uh, to give you a proof sketch for this. Um, suppose the lemma doesn't hold for vertex V. So there is a vertex V that has larger distance to any cluster center than opt. Um, so now if we add this vertex V to the set of cluster centers, we obtain a set of B plus two vertices, which all have pairwise distance more than opt. Because of the way we, we added vertices uh, to, to, this, um, to this set C, and because the, there is an additional vertex that has distance more than opt, uh, all of these vertices have pairwise distance more than opt. And then we prove the following claim, which says that adding a single edge to our graph decreases the number of vertices with pairwise distance more than opt by at most one. So even if we add B vertices to the uh, B edges to the graph, we will still end up with at least two vertices with pairwise with the distance more than opt, and this shows then that you can never reach a diameter of opt uh, using edges of cost at most B. Um, so to prove this claim, we have to do a case analysis. It's not very hard to do, but uh, kind of tricky to to present and talk. So I skip it. <laughs> Um, so we end up with something like this. So we have cluster centers, 
And we know that uh, from a cluster center, or from every vertex, we can reach a cluster center with distance at most opt, even adding no edges at all. So now we will actually restrict our attention to distances between cluster centers. So because to reach V from U, we will actually afterwards go from U to C2, uh, and then go somewhere from C2 to C5, and then from C5 to V. Uh, so we spend at most opt here, at most opt here, and if we manage to spend at most two times opt between the cluster centers, then we get a four approximation. <coughs> so that's what I present now. Um, so the sub problem we look at here is, I want to look at a single source version. So I want to go optimally from C1 to every other cluster center. Um, so because then I ensure that uh, to reach C2 from C1, I spend at most opt, and to reach C5 from C1, I also spend at most opt. So in total, I can go from C5 to C2 with length two opt at most. So the subproblem is that we want to minimize the maximum distance from C1 to any other cluster center by adding edges of cost at most B. Um, and then as I described, we then get a four approximation for the diameter. Um, to solve this problem, we will use an exponential time procedure, which exponentially depends on the budget. And it is based on shortest path trees rooted at C1. Um, so shortest pass tree uh, in a graph G prime uh, and for a subset of vertices S and a root vertex V is something like this. Uh, so it's a subgraph of the graph uh, which is actually a tree that's rooted at our source V. And we can reach all the vertices in S in this subtree. And for every vertex in S, the distance from the root to S is the same in the tree as in the graph. So it's actually, actually, actually um, a combination of shortest paths starting at S and going to all, uh, starting at V, sorry, and going to all the vertices in S. So it almost starts at, at the, the root and then goes to all the vertices in S uh, using shortest paths. So the algorithm now needs to compute such a thing, um, which is optimum for any uh, augmentation of the graph where we add at, at edges of cost at most b. So we want to minimize the height, the height of this uh, of this shortest path tree by adding non-edges of cost at most b. So this is done as follows. Um, so for a vertex, which is a root, um, and a subset of clusters, and a given budget, I denote by gamma of u comma s comma b, uh, the smallest height of a sh such a shortest path tree. Um, and I compute this gamma with a, dynam a dynamic programming procedure. If we just want to reach one node, then we can just use our uh, all pairs shortest pass uh, pre-processing to just answer the question. Um, otherwise, let me go to the, so, so by this, I describe these oracle calls where um, that returns the, the shortest pass from, or the distance between V and CI in any augmentation of the graph where we add edges of cos that must be. Um, and now from this root, uh, so my, my shortest pass tree could either split directly into different um, directions, or I could go along one pass and then split. Um, I could reach a vertex uh, in my set S on the way, so S was the vertices I want to reach, or not. Um, so I select this vertex U prime that I reach first when I walk along the shortest path tree before it splits. 
So u prime could actually be equal to u, in which case we're in phase one, phase A. Um, it might be in the set S, or it might not be in the set S. Um, and all of these cases are taken care of by this formula. We first walk with a budget of V1 to this vertex U prime, and then minimize, look up the, the maximum value of these two shortest pass tree, trees. And when I process the sets by uh, increasing size, then I can always look up these, uh, these values. <clears throat> so finally, I will get the 1,4 approximation for this problem. And uh, so the running time is 3 to the b times the polynomial. So here we will process actually uh, some exponential number of subsets for each minimization. And we compute uh, an exponential number of values here. So that gives you the, the 3 to the b. So it's trivial to, to show 4 to the b, but actually uh, the number of subsets or the, the size of the subset here uh, will influence this, this, yeah, this number of subsets. And then, as I already mentioned, for we, we also show that uh, there is no approximation algorithm in FPT running time, uh, which achieves such an approximation factor. So three half is the best we can hope for uh, here. Um, yeah, so, so given these cluster centers, we can do other things that are much simpler. Um, so we might spend more edges than at our disposal. Um, uh, for unit costs, we can actually like compute the shortest path between any two cluster centers using at most B edges, then we spend much more edges than are at our, our disposal, but we get a three approximation. Um, yeah. So the number of cluster centers here was uh, B plus one. If you look at all pairs, for each of them spend B uh, edges, uh, then we get this uh, approximation factor for the, the number of additional edges, and this one for the diameter. Um, we could also look at, again at the single source version and compute the shortest path from C1 to every other cluster center and each such shortest path would uh, um, use B additional arcs at most. Uh, then we get the B comma four approximation in polynomial time. Um, or you could compute something like a, a spanning tree of the cluster graph where each cluster will actually represent one vertex, and then you want to be able to reach each cluster, or you want to connect the clusters. Uh, so in this picture, they are already connected, but you might want to, they might not be connected. So you want to connect them with a minimum size spanning tree um, between the clusters. And then you get a 1,3k plus 2 approximation. Um, to wrap up, so we have looked at, this is the first, one of the first papers that looks at arbitrary costs and lengths. Um, and we get an FPT 1,4 approximation for our problem. Uh, for unit costs, we get uh, some simpler algorithms uh, with trade-off between the, the approximation factor for the cost and for the diameter. Um, we show this W2 hardness result. And there's some obvious uh, questions that one could attack. Uh, so one is, can you actually achieve uh, approximation factors where both the approximation factor for the cost is a constant and the approximation factor for the diameter is a constant in polynomial time? So the question is interesting even for unit costs because it's still unknown. Um, so here we had an optimal budget that we used, um, but you could also also look at uh, like uh, an optimal diameter. How many arcs do you need to add uh, to obtain an optimal diameter using SPT time? And uh, one open question that has been open for a while is whether this problem is actually 
polynomial when the input graph is a tree or forest. So that's still unknown. And it's been mentioned several times in previous work. Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about. Thank you. Uh, no, we didn't do any experiments. What is Would that be interesting? I mean, to compare to, to, I don't know, some completely different technique, like the Google search. Yes, yes, sure. Um, See whether it actually makes sense to do it. I, I think these, these algorithms are actually implementable. They're not very complicated. Uh, in particular, the, the polynomial time ones should be quite easy to implement. So the, the dynamic programming is not difficult, but uh, you might run into memory problems. Uh, yeah. So there are no big hidden uh, constant factors in the running time. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> should be implemented. Are you planning to do that, or do you leave that to more part? Um, I think we are not planning to do it. I don't know. <laughs> You're welcome to implement it. <laughs> yes? Uh, does it change anything if the budget uh, are not integer, the cost? Yeah, if they are not? If they are not integers? <clears throat> um, so, some of our some of our proofs, like this one, relies on the fact that uh, each vertex has cost at least one. Um, so if you say that they are not necessarily integers, but they are all still at least one, then I don't see any problems. Well, you're layering, without, without some the smallest difference between. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the, the difference might play, play a big role, yes. You have to discretize the layer. Yes, yes. So, so actually for the layering, um, there, there's an other method um, that is different from ours, uh, but that only approximates uh, the length. Uh, so it gives a one plus epsilon approximation. And this should work even for non-integers. Yep? So I, I missed uh, one you have approximation of four. Is that yep. time or is that just that the analysis led to four, but could be less? Um, for this algorithm, you mean? Yes, for this algorithm. <coughs> for the same algorithm, um, we didn't actually look at it, but uh, I have a feeling that it's tight. Um, okay. And uh, another thing, uh, you, you talked about the other problem where you don't approximate the budget, but you yep. approximate the time. Yes. No, more? the other way around. Yeah. Doesn't this seem more well-motivated? Uh, that you don't want to see... So we actually don't spend more than our okay. budget okay. in this FPT approximation algorithm? That, that's better. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> you don't want to see the budget, but you still want to get the... Well, you can set your, your budget to something lower than what you actually have and uh, okay. say you don't necessarily spend all of your money, but... Uh, <laughs> you're happy to spend at least one fourth, so I don't know. Yep. Um, regarding your approximation, your, your definition of your approximation, the first part, the budget-related part is one-sided, right? So when you say it's a one approximation, then um, you don't spend more than your budget. Yep. But you don't claim that you that your solution approximates how much budget you actually have to spend to achieve um, oh, so you mean, um, so when I give a 1,4 approximation algorithm, uh -huh. I don't know uh, I mean what budget I actually four. need to get a 4 approximation. Yeah. Yes, yes. Maybe that's that's true. Well, you can reduce it to the, like, single criteria problem, uh, I think. Oh, what exactly, exactly would you want to achieve? So. Um, Yes, okay, yeah. So, so probably it would be 
So if, if we have a one fourth information given for how much of the you can compare to the optimal. Okay, you always use all the budget, right? That, then you would just do a single quaternion optimization algorithm. Minimize I just, the, just want to minimize the budget. Right. Yeah. And another question <laughs> uh, from, from the application that you mentioned. Um, it seems that uh, utility graphs would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I, rem I don't remember all of the discussions we had, but uh, we certainly looked at uh, Euclidean graphs. It didn't seem to help much that they are Euclidean. So we even had a bunch of results for uh, graphs respecting the tri triangle inequality, but then they were all superseded by the other results we had, which were more general. Um, and we didn't get anything better for Euclidean graphs. Uh, so we had, so I think we had a hardness result as well for Euclidean graphs, but uh, there are some problems with uh, representing coordinates of vertices as usual. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, <laughs> so did you look at the problems like I'm not sure. don't care as much about the budget. So like, you want to get no more than twice the optimal diameter, yeah. and then you just want to minimize, do that with yes. budget. Did you look at that? Um, so. Or did, or did someone else, is that like, work that's being looked at elsewhere? So it has been looked at in previous work. Um, <coughs> sorry. So here for unit cost and unit weights, they wanted to find an optimum diameter, and they over approximated the budget by a factor of log n, which is quite a lot. Um, and here for polynomially bounded lengths, they also had an optimum diameter, but using even more budget. Um, for two, um, so this result comes into play. Yeah. So there are a bunch of results like that. Yes? So within this, you mentioned the shortest part. You said that people have other, are there any other interesting problems within this wider class which uh, are very well motivated and people haven't motivated so as much? We, we found one problem in uh, biology where you actually want to minimize the average distance between any two average vertices. Distance. Yes. Um, so, so there are actually two, two versions. One is where you have source vertices and target vertices, and you want to minimize the average distance from source vertices to target, dis target vertices by adding edges um, of length one, I think. Mm -hmm. um, that was related to some biological processes. Um, there were several variants of this problem, yes, to minimize the, the average distance, either between all pairs or between sources and targets, things like that, yeah. Serge, you have a question from the platforms group at Monash, who are actually watching you on the web. Yeah. Uh, they want to know if you are planning to use this in, I guess, in Valentin's question. Uh, in an application or a real world case study, because you identified several areas where this problem was yes. interesting? Are you planning on uh, looking at data sets from these areas, I guess, and, and maybe applying to them? So currently we are not planning to do that. Um, I don't know if I would be the right person to do it, to be honest, <laughs> but uh, that's certainly something one could look at, yeah. Defining the big problem, start with this and say, yes, by the way, for a single mm -hmm. source destination pair with this, uh, we can actually solve it optimally in a long time. Okay. This is how you do it. Yes. Uh, which now brings me to the question uh, what if 
uh, uh, like this is for just one, the diameter is for all mm -hmm. events. Uh, so looking in between, uh, mm -hmm. how about a constant number of source destination variables, say two? Okay. Um, constant number of source destination pairs. So that would be like... Um, to U1, V1, and U2, V2. Yes. Uh, and you want to add edges up to cost D to minimize either the sum or the max of the mm -hmm. distance only between these two pairs because you don't care about anything else. So if we have a single source and a constant number of destinations, so that's very related to this, this problem with cluster centers. We actually don't use the fact that these are nicely distributed or that, uh, yeah, that the distance between them is large. So actually your problem would be also solved by our algorithm. Um, then it would be approximate. I mean, you about. Uh, if you have a single source, then we solve it optimally. And, but okay, now if you have two sources and two destinations, um, I want to minimize the maximum distance only, max only between the distances of these two pairs by yes. adding edges up to this. I don't see that it, it's not like you could run your uh, layered no. algorithm twice. And no, 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 no. Is better, but so is no, it might be a very different solution. Um, so, but uh, no, actually, you could add one special vertex which has distance zero to these two vertices, which are your sources. No, sorry. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. <laughs> but if you have one source and two destinations. Yes, then this works. Then yeah. this works. Yeah. Yeah. If you have more than one source uh, and more than one destination, then I, I, I don't see how you can apply our results. So I should probably add that to the open questions at the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting one. Sometimes you don't really care about the diameter from anywhere to anywhere. There yes. are mm -hmm. distinguished nodes which are. Yeah. Um, should ask if there's if there are any questions in Canberra, you guys need to jump in and uh, let us know. Yes. Yeah, no question from here. No question. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay, well, everybody, let's thank Serge one more time and see you guys later. Thanks for all the questions. <laughs>